Let's talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Let me go ahead and preface this by saying that this video is intended for people who have already seen these concepts before and need a little bit of a refresher. If you've never heard of eigenvalues and eigenvectors before, you should probably seek out some other reference for learning how they work. But the basic idea is that an eigenvalue is a number, lambda, and while there are complex eigenvalues, we're going to restrict ourselves to talking about real ones for this course. So an eigenvalue is a real number and an associated real valued vector such that multiplication by a matrix, the matrix A that this is an eigenvalue for, is the same thing as multiplying by that real number. So a simple little example is let's say we've got the matrix 4, 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to say that 5 is an eigenvalue of that with the eigenvector of 1, 1. Why is that? Because if I take the matrix times 1, 1, 4 times 1 plus 1 times 1 gives us 5, 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 gives us 5. So we get, by multiplying by that matrix, the same thing as taking 5 times 1, 1. Now, it's also worth noting that this isn't the only eigenvector for that eigenvalue. Any scalar multiple of this, like 2, 2, or negative 3, negative 3, or 7, 7, whatever, any other thing where the top the both things, well, any scalar multiple of this is also going to be an eigenvector for that eigenvalue. Now, in previous courses, you're taught something like this. You're taught that the eigenvalues are the solutions to what we call the characteristic equation. That we take the determinant of the matrix A minus lambda I, set that equal to zero, and you get a polynomial that you can solve. So, for example, for this matrix here, we can say we have 4, 1, 2, 3, minus lambda, and we can't put in a value for lambda because we don't know what that is yet, times 1, 0, 0, 1. That gives us the matrix 4 minus lambda, 1, 2, 3 minus lambda. The determinant of that matrix we can find, since it's a 2 by 2, but just by multiplying down the diagonal minus multiplying up the diagonal. So we have 4 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 2 times 1. So multiplying that out, we have lambda squared minus 7 lambda plus 12 minus 2. And we're trying to make that equal to 0. So we have lambda squared minus 7 lambda plus 10 equals 0. So easy to see that that factors as lambda minus 5 times lambda minus 2 equals 0. So we have eigenvalues of the 5 that we were working with before, but also 2. This is all correct, but from a numerical analysis perspective, this is horrible. Nothing that I said here, other than the basic definition of eigenvalue and eigenvector, works for a numerical analysis kind of situation. Because this characteristic equation, the determinant of a minus lambda i, well, we know finding a determinant of a matrix is incredibly difficult. When you start talking about things beyond 2 by 2, it gets harder and harder numerically to compute the determinant of a matrix. And then we start having things where we've got a variable in there that's even harder to code. Further, even once we get it down to here, even once we get the polynomial, we'd have to use a numerical method to solve that for anything bigger than a squared. 
yes, technically there's formulas for cubics and quadratic or fourth powers, but realistically you need a numerical method to solve those things, and those do exist. But even so, this is just not an efficient way to find these eigenvalues. So what we're going to do in future videos is we're going to look at better ways to numerically approximate. Again, we won't be able to find, but we'll be able to approximate eigenvalues and eigenvectors.